Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for the glorious meetings we're having. We thank you because you are leading us to rest in Canaan land. And we pray, Lord, you grant rest to everyone in Jesus' name. I pray that this will be another period of blessing. Another period of breaking every yoke. Everything that causes restlessness in any life. You put a permanent end to it in Jesus' name. Bless all your people. Permanent blessing. Extraordinary blessing. Uncommon blessing. Put into every life in Jesus' name. We thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. We're looking at Hebrews chapter 10. I'm reading from verse 19. Hebrews chapter 10 verse 19. Having therefore brethren boldness to enter into the holiest by the blood of Jesus. By new and living way which he has consecrated for us. Through the veil that he is to say his flesh. Having an high priest over the house of God. Let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith. Having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience. And our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering. For he is faithful that promised. Let us hold fast the confession of our faith. The profession of our faith. Let us hold fast the testimony of our faith. Let us hold fast the declaration, proclamation of the faith we testify about. Because he is faithful that promised. The faithfulness of God. Is the basis for our faith. The faithfulness of God that God cannot fail. That whatever God has said, whatever God has promised, is as good as done. Because He is going to do it. He cannot fail, He will not fail you. And because of that faithfulness, on the side of God. That's why we have faith in God. As God said, He will save you. He is faithful. He will save. As God said, He will restore the backslider. He is faithful. He will restore. As God said, He will heal you. He is faithful. He must heal you. As he said, he will break every yoke in your life. That he will destroy the works of the devil. That he will give you abundant life, a happy life, a rich life, a prosperous life. Look at the promises of God. They cannot fail. As he said, he's taking you to heavenly Canaan. That he doesn't want you to perish in the wilderness. That he's going to get you to heaven by all means. God is faithful. He cannot fail. It is the faithfulness of God that informs our faith in him. 
That's why we want to examine from the word of God. Faith in God's faithfulness. Faith in God's faithfulness. This is what gives you confidence when you come to the Lord. There is no shadow of doubt in your mind when you come to the Lord. You will examine the promises of God. What he said he will do for you. What he said he will give unto you. And you will hold on to that promise. And you know that heaven and earth may pass away. The skies may roll up. The seas may dry up. The oceans may dry up. And the mountains may move. But the promises of God to you in particular must be fulfilled. That's why it tells us in that Hebrews chapter 10 verse 19. It says, having therefore brethren to a boldness to enter into the very presence of God, the holiest by the blood of Jesus. The holiest of all, that's the holy of holies. The tabernacle of the children of Israel had three parts. The outer court, the holy place, and then the holy of holies, the holiest of all. That's where you have the ark of the covenant. That's where you have the representation of the presence and the power of God. In the Old Testament, only the high priest could enter that place once in a year. But now after the death of Christ, with the blood of Jesus Christ, we now have confidence and boldness to enter into that holiest of all. And you can come right to the presence of the Lord. You can come right into the power of the Lord. And you know that you are not going to be denied whatever you are asking from the Lord. He goes on to say, after he tells us that we have boldness to enter into that holy of holies. It says, it's by a new and living way. The old way of condemnation is abolished. The old way of fearfulness and timidity, all that is gone. Because all the condemnation of the Old Testament, the blood of Jesus has wiped everything away. All the fear of if I enter the Holy of Holies without appropriate conduct, then I might be stricken dead. All that fear is gone. They will find that I'm not the high priest in Israel. Maybe I will not be accepted there. All that is gone. It says now every believer, every child of God, you have the boldness, you have the right, you have the authority, you have the permission to enter right into the presence of the Lord without fear, without condemnation, and without any fear of death. And he says, it's by the new and the living way. And he says, that way is consecrated for us. It's appointed for us. The Lord has made the way by his death on the cross of Calvary. By the shedding of the blood of the Lamb. That there should be no fear in your heart. There should be no doubt in your mind. That the Lord is waiting for you in the Holy of Holies. 
and the presence of the Lord will surround your life. The power of God will overshadow your life. And then he tells us, having therefore an high priest over the house of God. It's making use of the Old Testament illustration to give us a New Testament revelation. The Old Testament people had a high priest. Any time any challenge broke out in Israel, and the high priest came in with his sacrifice and incense and censor, every time the plague will stop. And now he comes to the new covenant, the new testament. And he says, we have a high priest. His name is Jesus. Any challenge in your life, any challenge in your family, any challenge in the church of the living God, our high priest comes in and the problem is solved. And Jesus, our high priest, is still alive. He comes to your life at this time comes your family at this time the plague is over the problems are over the challenges they come to an end because our high priest Jesus Christ is still alive for you for me for us all then he said let us draw near he says, don't drag your feet and don't draw back. Draw near in full assurance of faith. In full assurance of faith. Because he is faithful that promised. And I pray that the promises of God will be yes and amen for you this day in Jesus' name. As I said, we're looking at this passage. And we're talking on faith in God's faithfulness. There are three things we're going to look at before we pray. Because there's going to be prayer. And God is going to answer your prayer. Faith in God's faithfulness. Three things we're going to look at. Number one, the proper perception of of God's faithfulness. The proper perception of God's faithfulness. What do you know about the faithfulness of God? That helps you to understand any promise you look at, that promise will never fail. And you can rest on him. Rely on him completely. When you have that proper perception in the faithfulness of God. Number two, the precious promises to the faithful. The precious promises of God that God has made to you in your place as a believer who is faithful to the Lord. Number three, the peculiar privileges of the faithful. Privileges that are yours already. And you'll know the practical possession of those privileges even from this day. And God's goodness will never fail in your life. Well, let's come back to number one. The proper perception of God's faithfulness. Look back again at that verse 23. Hebrews chapter 10 verse 23. It says, 
Let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering. God has given you a promise. Maybe you were reading the Bible and the promise came out and the Lord said, that is yours. Maybe you were praying and God spoke to you and he said, this is what I will do. Maybe the choir was singing and something came out of that song. A promise came to your heart and said, that promise is mine. Maybe your pastor was counseling you and a promise came out and you know that this promise is yours. He says, let us hold that fast. Don't let it go. The wind may blow. The storm may come. Whatever challenges you have in life, all those things will change. But God is a faithful God. Hold fast the profession of your faith without wavering to the very end. Then he said in the last part of that verse, for he is faithful that promised. As we talk about proper perception of God's faithfulness. What does that mean that he is faithful? He is trustworthy. He cannot fail. He will do what he said he will do. The skies may roll up like we said. The oceans may dry up like we said. Everything may be like in a commotion. But it will not affect the faithfulness of God. That's what you need to understand and know about the faithfulness of God. In Deuteronomy chapter 7 verse 9. Deuteronomy chapter 7 verse 9. Know therefore that the Lord thy God, he is God, the faithful God. When you pray and understand your faith, your God you are praying to is a faithful God. When you read the Bible and God says, this is what I'll do for you, understand. Your God is a faithful God. All these messages we're hearing, Monday, Sunday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, every time, remember what God said he will do. He is a faithful God. He must do it. He said in that verse 9, is the faithful God which keepeth covenant and mercy with them that love him and keep his commandments to a thousand generations. His faithfulness does not stop only in one forty period, in a period of 40 years. He was faithful to Moses and the children of Israel. And then he says, he is faithful unto a thousand generations. What's your understanding of one generation? Let's say, for example, a generation is only 40 years. A thousand generations will be 40,000 years. Even, even if you say that a generation is only 10 years. Then, thousand generations will be 10,000 years.
and the time of Moses until this time is just about 3,000 years. That means that generation after generation, all the promises that God had given to a thousand generations, about 40,000 years, that faithfulness is still there. Have that understanding. Whenever you pray, it's like Moses praying before the Lord. He's only quoting the promise of God. He's only saying, you are a God who is faithful, who will keep mercy and will keep your promises for your people. God, God said, I'm going to destroy the children of Israel. Moses said, God, you cannot do that. You must not do that. Remember your word unto Abraham. God said, that's right. I will not destroy them. He was faithful to his word. And to a thousand generations, 40,000 years, he's still faithful and faithful and faithful. If something happened and then God said, I'm going to destroy your family, you come back to God like Moses did. God, you will not. God, you cannot. God, you must not. Because look at your promise. You said you'll bless me and my house. God will say, that's all right. I will not destroy. Because he's faithful to a thousand generations. Psalm 36, I'm reading from verse 5. Psalm 36, I'm reading from verse 5. Thy mercy, O Lord, is in the heavens, and thy faithfulness reacheth unto the clouds. Uh, you understand what the Lord is saying here? When it says it reaches unto a thousand generations, that is, we call it uh, horizontal. It's moving from here to there, from the east unto the west. It's so long that you cannot see the edge. But now, it's talking about something vertical. The clouds are up there, and your faithfulness reaches onto the clouds very, very far, high. That is, whatever the enemies are, whatever the problems are, whatever the challenges are, if they're on the ground, on the sea, horizontal. The faithfulness of God will get rid of them for you in Jesus' name. If they're up in the air, in the powers of the sky, his faithfulness, the fulfillment of his promise, reaches unto the sky, unto the clouds. It says, whether you are thinking of something on, on the ground or you are thinking of something in the sky, the faithfulness of God assures you the promise of God will be yes and amen in your life. Psalm 119. 119. I'm reading from verse 19. Thy faithfulness is unto all generations. There may be people that will say, all right, God's faithfulness is unto a thousand generations. The reason why God said that is that he thought you will calculate 
and know that a generation is about 40 years and a thousand generations will be 40,000 years. That's long, long, long enough. But should in case you don't know how to calculate 40,000 generations. He says, what I mean is my faithfulness is unto all generations. And now you cannot escape all generations. In our generation, God will be faithful unto you. God saved in the past generations is saving today. God healed in the past generations. God is healing in our generation. God delivered the oppressed in the past former generations. God is delivering the oppressed in this generation. Look at the time of Jesus Christ. At that time of the generation of the children of Israel. He blessed men. He blessed women. He blessed children. He blessed everyone that came. Because he was faithful in that generation. In this our generation. When a man comes to Christ, he will bless him. When a woman comes to Christ, God we'll bless her. Because thy faithfulness is unto all generations. Thou was established the earth and it abides. They continue this day according to thine ordinance. For all are thy servants. All are thy servants. That is everything on earth. That the servants of the Lord. And the Lord will use them to bless your life. Look at 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. I'm reading from verse 24. 1 Thessalonians chapter, 20, chapter uh, 5 verse 24. For he is faithful that calleth you who also will do it. He is the Lord and he called you. You have answered that call. He called you to repent and say, yes, Lord, I repent. He called you to righteousness. Yes, Lord, I want to be righteous. He called you to salvation. Yes, Lord, I want to be saved. He called you to sanctification. Yes, Lord, I want to be sanctified. He called you to his service. Yes, Lord, I want to serve you. He called you and says he wants you to live with him in heaven. Yes, Lord, I want to go to heaven. He called you to healing. Yes, Lord, I want to be healed. He called you. He said, why are you oppressed? I'm calling you to deliverance. Yes, Lord, I want to be delivered. He called you to blessing abundant life. Yes, Lord, that's what I want. Faithful is he that calleth you who also will do do it. He will do it in your life. I said he will do it in your life. You will not be a child of disappointment. And there will be no disappointment in your life in Jesus name. Point number two now. The precious promises to the faithful. The precious promises to the faithful. The promise of God is all for you. 
whenever you have a problem, there is a simple way to solve that problem. Look at a promise of God that is appropriate for solving that problem. If you're having trial, look at a promise of God that will remove that trial. If you are facing a point, a problem of weakness in your life, look at the promise of God that says you will not be weary, you will not be weak. If you are sick anytime, look at the promise of God that says I am the Lord that healeth thee. If you are having confusion and conflict in your family, Look at the promise of God that says, I'll give you peace, everlasting peace, overflowing peace. If you're witnessing, you're preaching, there's no power, there is no anointing, and there is no fruit. Look for a promise of God that promises you power, courage, boldness, anointing, and success and victory. Match your problems with his promises. And you remember God is a faithful God. All those promises he has made is going to fulfill everything. In 1 Kings chapter 8, verse 56. 1 Kings chapter 8, I'm reading from verse 56. And you will see that all you need to look for is the promise of God. That applies to the particular peculiar problem in your life. Don't look at the problem. Hold on to the promise. The precious promises of the Lord. You will come out of that problem. First Kings chapter 8 verse 56. Blessed be the Lord that has given rest unto his people Israel. He gave them rest, he will give you rest. He gave them rest according to all that he promised. There has not failed one word of all his good promise, which he promised by the hand of Moses, his servant. We have somebody greater than Moses. Is the Lord Jesus Christ. He has given us greater promises than Old Testament promises. And because of the faithfulness of God in every generation, since the promises of God were fulfilled for the children of Israel as he gave it to them by Moses, The same thing he has done for us. He is going to fulfill the promises he made through the Lord Jesus Christ. Galatians chapter 3 verse 9. The precious promises to the faithful. Galatians chapter 3, I'm reading from verse 9. It tells us here. So then, they which are faith are blessed with faithful Abraham. Have you seen how God was faithful to Abraham? How God fulfilled all his promises to Abraham. Even after Abraham had gone to the great beyond. God was still fulfilling his promises unto Abraham. In your life, God will continue to fulfill his promises unto you. 
Have you seen how God fulfilled the promise to Abraham? Anywhere Abraham was, whoever was dealing with Abraham, positive or negative, God always remembered Abraham. Somebody took Abraham's wife. God was faithful. He defended him. Somebody took Abraham's land. God was faithful. He defended him. Anywhere Abraham was, near Sodom, or in Gerar, or near Egypt, anywhere Abraham was, God was faithful to him in keeping his promises. Anywhere you go, everywhere you are, God will always remember you. The promises he made, he will not forget. He, his promises will follow you everywhere. So you cannot say, it's because I'm not in such and such a place. That's why I'm not victorious. Victory is yours every time in Jesus' name. His promises will be yours. In First Timothy chapter 1, I'm reading from verse 12. First Timothy chapter 1, we're looking at verse 12. And you'll, you'll see that God is a faithful God. Faithful every time, faithful everywhere, faithful to everyone that he calls. First Timothy chapter 1 verse 12. And I thank Christ Jesus our Lord. Who has enabled me. For that he counted me faithful. Putting me into the ministry. When he calls us. He calls us into ministry. He calls us into service. And because he calls us into service. He remains faithful. And all his promises to us. To help us, to lift us up, to answer our prayers, to give us victory, and to do every good thing in our lives. While we remain faithful unto him, he keeps all those promises without failing. And he's going to do that in your life. He will not fail in your life in Jesus' name. In 2 Peter chapter 1, I'm reading from verse 3. The precious promises he has given, the glorious promises he has given, the great and high promises he has given. And he's granted that to you. Once you come to the kingdom and you're a child of God, and he says, I'm taking you from here, I'm taking you to glory. Every promise he has made for your spirit, for your soul, for your body. So that his goodness will never fail in your life. He's going to be a faithful God. As long as you remain in that aura, in that area, in that circle of faithfulness. He will not fail. I said he will not fail. I said he will not fail. Second Peter chapter 1. I'm looking at verse 3. According as his divine power, he has given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness. Then he says, through the knowledge of him that has called us to glory and to virtue. Look at verse 4 there. It says, whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises. Mm -hmm. 
that by these, that is by these great and precious promises, it might we might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that's in the world through lust. Have you seen the precious promises there? And he tells us that he gives us those precious promises according as his divine power. According as his supernatural power. According as his heavenly power. According as his creative power. According to the power that belongs to God and God alone. He says this is ours. And you know that his power never fails. And so you can always rely on him, always depend on him because it's according to his divine power. Then, then he said, he has given unto us all things. He has given unto us all things. You'll never be in a situation where you say the promises of God doesn't cover this, doesn't cover this, whether it is secular or spiritual. He has given unto us all things. You cannot say this is personal. He has given unto us all things. It relates to your family. He has given unto us all things. It relates to your personal life of righteousness. He has given unto us all things. He has uh, given unto us all things in your ministerial life as well. Whatever challenge you face in ministry, whatever challenge you face in your personal private life, the promises of God cover every area of life. Secular or spiritual is given unto us all things that pertain to life and to godliness. And then he says, he through the knowledge that of life in Christ and he gives us glory and he gives us virtue. Then he says, whereby he has given unto us great and precious promises. The promise of salvation, great and precious promises. The promise of sanctification, holiness, without which no man shall see the Lord. Great and precious promises. The victorious life, the promise of the victorious life, whatever the temptation, whatever the trial, you cannot say this temptation is so great, the promise of God cannot cover this. He has given unto us these great and precious promises of victory over temptation Every time, everywhere. Some people look at sanctification as if, uh uh, that's a no go area. I don't think I can have that. Why not? God is faithful. He has given us the promise of sanctification. The approaching of the Adamic nature. There are some so called theologians. They say, How can God approach the Adamic nature? They are not thinking according to his divine power, they are thinking according to their own human limitation. It gives us the divine nature. It takes away the nature of Adam, the nature of Satan, the nature of fallen man, and it gives us that divine nature that belongs to the Lord. After he saves you by that great promise, sanctifies you, 
by that wonderful promise and he heals you of every form of sickness by the precious promises and somebody says can somebody be totally free from every sickness on earth every attack and every affliction in life can somebody be totally free spirit soul and body he has given unto us all things pertaining to life and godliness. And these are great and precious promises. So that by these promises, you'll be victorious and triumphant in Jesus' name. Then it says you'll be partakers of the divine nature. And the divine nature doesn't sin. Divine nature doesn't yield to Satan. The divine nature is not weak. The divine nature is not falling and rising. He will give it to you. I said he will give it to you. And then he goes on to say, having escaped the corruption that is in, in the world. Can you escape corruption? Corruption in the office? Corruption in society? Corruption of the dancing halls? Corruption of bribery and all these kickbacks? You have escaped. I said you have escaped. He said, having escaped, it's done already. You will not go back to them in Jesus' name. Let me read those, three, those two verses before we go on to the final point. According as his divine power. Let me ask you a, let me ask you a question. What if you were to read these two verses every day? You wake up in the morning and you read these two verses. To maintain your victory. To maintain your authority. To maintain your triumph. And to maintain your overcoming spirit, the spirit of the conqueror. That you wake up in the morning. You say, this is what I have. This is what belongs to me. This will never fail. This is going with me everywhere I go. I'm going to be victorious today. Victorious over sin. Victorious over sickness. Victorious over evil spirits. Victorious over Satan. Victorious in all circumstances. Victorious in every situation. Victorious personally. Victorious in every attack, every affliction that may come my way. Victorious in every changing various or various circumstances of my life. What if you woke up every morning to remind yourself of the faithfulness of God? To remind yourself of how great and precious the promises of God are. What if you woke up every morning and you said, this is mine. This cannot fail. My God is a faithful God. And his faithfulness reaches to all generations. And reaches to everyone, everywhere that believes on him and takes hold of his faithfulness. And you say, according as his divine power. Not human power. Not your own literal power. According as his divine power, he has given unto me all things that pertain to life and godliness. He has given unto me. Not that he's going to give, he's giving me already. It not depends on me searching it out, finding it out, making use of what I have. 
is giving us, giving me all things that pertain to life and to godliness. And it is through the knowledge of him, the knowledge of Jesus Christ, who loved you, died for you, and rose again. So that through his knowledge, you are called unto glory and to virtue. Whereby are given unto me exceeding great and precious promises. That by these I might be a partaker of the divine nature. What if you went out every morning understanding I'm going out today, I'm carrying the divine nature inside me? The nature that cannot fail. The nature that is not weak. The nature that will not be falling or rising. The nature that will not be bending and yielding to the past life, to the old life. And then he says, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. And every day, you are going to be an overcomer. I said every day, you are going to be an overcomer. I come to point number three now. The peculiar privileges of the faithful. The peculiar privileges of the faithful. God reserves a special place for those who are faithful. They keep a relationship with God and they say, I know God's demands. I know God's promises. I know God's provision. I'm going to be faithful to God in every detail. I've made a covenant with the Lord. When I came to the Lord and repented of my sins, I made a covenant with the Lord. And I am going to remain faithful to the covenant I made with the Lord. Those who are faithful like that, they have peculiar privileges. They have special privileges. They have extraordinary privileges that God grants unto them. He puts you in a very special class, in a separate place, because you're a faithful believer. But sometimes we don't know who is a faithful person, who is a faithful believer, who is a faithful follower of Jesus Christ. What does it mean to be faithful? Number one, you are trustworthy. You said, Lord, I'll follow you. You are trustworthy. Lord, I will obey you. You are trustworthy. Somebody is not trustworthy, is not faithful. Somebody is always promising God, I'll follow you, I'll obey you, I'll do this, I'll do that. And he never does what he promises the Lord, he's not faithful. Who is a faithful person? Number two, he's dependable. You can lean on him. You can trust him. Because he's faithful. If he tells you, I'm waiting for you here, you can depend on that. Lord, I'm waiting for you to choose the life partner for me. You can depend on him. Lord, even though it is uh, appearing late or whatever, I'm waiting here, I'm waiting on the Lord. You are dependable. That's a faithful person. What's a faithful person? Is a dependable person and he is a person who is predictable. Predictable. Now, give this man this bribe so that he will do this and do that. 
No, he will not do it. How do you know? Go and give him. Know that man, I know him. He is a child of God. He is a Bible believer. He is predictable. He will not take the bribe. Change the receipt a little. We'll share the extra. Don't tell that man. Because that man, you can predict him. He's not going to do that. That is a faithful person. Trustworthy. Dependable. Predictable. Who is a faithful person? Is a truthful person. Truthful person. Is a person that is loyal to the truth. He does not walk by his feeling. I need money now, so if I steal, God knows I need money. He has truth in his heart. He lives by that truth in his life. Who is a faithful person? It's a reliable person. You can rely on them. But you know, there are many people who say they are believers today and you doubt very much they are not reliable. The covenant they make with God, they are not reliable. The marriage covenant they make at the altar, I will keep to him and to him alone. They are not reliable. I will keep to this man alone. They are not reliable. When their flesh demands something, they run away and they go to do something unprintable, unthinkable. Who is a faithful person? Is a believable person. You can believe him. He doesn't have to swear, doesn't have to cry, doesn't have to call heaven and add to witness. Once he says, this is what I'm going to do, this is where I'm going, this is where I will not go, it's final. He's believable because he's faithful. Who is a faithful person? Is a teachable person. Once, you know, maybe he's making a mistake. And we call him to order. But you said you will obey the Lord in small things and great things. Look at this one that you're doing. Is this obedience to the Lord? Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't even think about it. He comes back to the truth. He comes back to the foundation. He's teachable because he's faithful. That's what the Lord is looking for. That you are faithful, then his peculiar privileges will come unto you. Trustworthy. Dependable. is predictable. is truthful. is reliable. Believable. And teachable. What peculiar privileges will, be, will belong to such people? And look at Daniel chapter 6. Daniel chapter 6, I'm reading from verse 4. In Daniel chapter 6, reading from verse 4, here's what he says. Then the presidents and, and the princes um, sought to find occasion against Daniel concerning the kingdom. But they could not, they could find none occasion for uh, no fault. For as much as he was faithful. Mm -hmm. 
neither was there any error or fault found in him. That's the faithfulness of a child of God. Faithfulness in the private, faithful, faithfulness in the public. Faithfulness in the family and faithful in the place of work. And such people will have peculiar privileges. What kind of privilege did Daniel have? The privilege of promotion. The privilege of protection. The privilege of preservation. Uh, look at that same chapter 6. I'm reading from verse 19. Reading from verse 19. Because they threw him in the lion's den. The lions will not have any power on the faithful in Jesus' name. Verse 19, then the king arose very early in the morning and went to, in haste unto the den of lions. And when he came to the den, he cried with a lamentable voice unto Daniel. Who, and, and the king spake and said to Daniel, O Daniel, servant of the living God, is thy God, whom thou servest uh, continually, able to deliver thee from uh, the lions? Is he able to deliver you from the lions? I'm asking you now, is he able to deliver you from the lions? Lions in the land. Lions in the forest. Lions in the world. Lions in the place of work. Lions in your community. Just be faithful to the Lord every day. He will deliver you in Jesus' name. Then said Daniel unto the king, O king, live forever. My God, you see your God, my God. I said, you see your God, my God. This powerful God, you see your God, my God. This omnipotent God, you see your God, my God. This protecting God, this faithful God, this covenant keeping God, is he your God, my God? The God that sees her faithfulness in secret and public, is he your God, my God? I sent his angel and he has shut the lion's mouth. From this very day, all the lions that try to devour you, the Lord will shut their mouths. Your blood is not for lions to drink. Your flesh is not for lions to eat up. All the lions of this world, the Lord will shut them up and silence them. You will go through life and you will have all your blessings intact in Jesus' name. He has shut the lions' mouths. That they have not hurt me, they cannot hurt you. They will not hurt you. They will not touch your life. When you are sleeping, they won't touch you. When you are awake, they will not touch you. Go to that same office, they will not touch you. Go back to that school, they will not touch you. Go back to that village, they will not touch you. On the road, the Lord will keep you from accidents, they will not touch you. From this very day, as you commit yourself to the Lord, I will say, I will be faithful. If you have been unfaithful in the past, the Lord will forgive you in Jesus' name. From this very day, in the strength of the Lord, by the promises of God, 
you will tell the Lord, I will be faithful from today by your grace. Accident will not claim your life. The world will not give you an untimely death. The people who are jealous of your progress, they will not be able to bring you down. As Daniel was promoted after the lion's den, you'll be promoted from this very day in Jesus' name. For as much as before him, innocency was found in me. And before thee, O king, have I done no hurt. God is faithful. Christ is faithful. And you are the child of a faithful God. That nature of faithfulness in God will come into you in Jesus' name. And all the promises of God, promise of healing, promise of salvation, promise of restoration, promise of holiness, promise of success, promise of power, promise of protection, all the great and precious promises. From this day, they'll be yours in Jesus' name. Going out, there'll be blessing. Coming in, there will be blessing. When you are alone, there will be blessing. When you are with everybody else, there will be blessing. Enemies will not hinder your progress. The promises of God will be yes and amen in your life in Jesus' name. That sickness you have had about will not come near you. And will not kill you. You will do everything God has sent you to this place to do before he calls you home to greater glory in Jesus' name. Have faith in God. He will not fail you. Have faith in God. He cannot fail. From this day, a new destiny is ahead of you. The past is gone. This present is blessed. In the faithfulness of God, your future will be bright and getting brighter and brighter every day in Jesus' name. Wipe your tears away. Wipe those tears away. The faithfulness of God will not allow the suffering to continue. Where is the person I'm talking about? Why don't you stand up and say, yes, Lord, it's me. Yes, Lord, it's me. Yes, Lord, it's me. I'm not going to cry anymore. Yes, Lord, it's me. I'm not going to be sorrowful anymore. Yes, Lord, it's me. I'm not going to be looking back anymore. Yes, Lord, it's me. I know you are a faithful God. I have faith. I have faith. I have faith. You will not fail. God will not fail you. Let me hear you pray. Open your mouth and pray. Pray with confidence. Pray with boldness. Pray with joy. The Lord is on your side. You will not fail. That difficulty will not end your life. And don't you ever touch that life. Don't you ever touch that life. You cannot commit suicide. You are a child of God. The Lord is going to roll all your problems away. Don't you ever think of going away from the Lord. Going back from the Lord. Don't you ever think. Of I'm going to hide somewhere. These problems are too many. The Lord is solving the problem today. The same God Daniel served. That's the same God you are serving. He will deliver you. Your deliverance has come. Your help has come. 
if you are backsliding at the time of discouragement, at the time of carelessness, at the time you were not watching, God is a faithful God. He said, I will forgive. I doesn't take him time. He's a faithful God. Oh Lord, I'm sorry. That's all. That's all. I come back. I return. That's all. I receive your love. I receive your grace. That's all. I receive your mercy. That's all. In your strength, in your might, now I will stand. It will help you. You will stand. And then whatever problem or challenge you face, present it to God now. He will solve all your problems. There is a promise with every problem to be solved. He will do it. He will do it. He will do it. He loves you more than you think. In Jesus' name we pray. I don't want an amen of those who are tired and weak and fainting. I want an amen of those who are strong in the Lord. You know, so sometimes uh, when, uh, you know, I know Satan is now far away from you. I said Satan is now far away from you. But, uh, you know, where Satan is hiding somewhere, he's trying to listen. And then when, you know, something great is coming your way, and then you say, Amen. Oh, the devil says, I've taken their voice, I'm, I'm now overcoming. But when Satan hears that there's an Amen coming out of Washington State, Satan hears that with confidence and boldness and courage and assurance and certainty, there's an Amen that is coming from Ocean State here. Satan will say, those people now, they know their rights. He will run relay race today. Praise the Lord. I said, Praise the Lord. Where is the child of victory there? Where is the conqueror? Where is the overcomer? And the one that the grace of God will multiply in your life. And the failure of the past is cancelled. Discouragement of the past is cancelled. And the defeat of the past is cancelled. And you trust in a God who is faithful. A God that will never fail. That you become special in the sight of God. Raise up your hand. You are victorious. Wipe those tears away. Don't cry anymore. Don't let Satan see that you are so weak. You are crying for him. Glorify the Lord and then let there be joy in your life. And the joy of the Lord will be your strength. those victorious hands up. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for all your children here. I pray for all the believers here. Lord, we trust in your faithfulness. 
and all the people that are hearing this message now. Lord, I pray for everyone. Lord, I pray you will shut the mouth of every lion. You will knock out all the paws and all the teeth of, that, of those mighty lions. Lord, we are sending forth these children of God. We are sending them back to home. Anywhere they came from, they are going back with victory. They are going back with the conqueror spirit. They are going back with assurance of your faithfulness. Lord, I pray everything the devil had deposited in their lives to make them defeated, to make them weak, to make them sick. Right now, I cancel them in Jesus' name. That sickness you thought will kill you. That sickness will not kill you. Be healed in Jesus' name. Those enemies you thought will kill you will destroy you. They will not kill you. They will not destroy you. All their chains, I loose you, I set you free. All the strongholds of the enemy wanting to keep you in bondage, I destroy all the strongholds of the enemy in your life in Jesus' name. the property you threw away because you are afraid. It's because I'm rich. That's why they are running after me. All the good jobs you threw away because you were afraid of the enemy. See, they are jealous of me. That's why they want to kill me. Uh, if they don't want him to work, get all their work. Everything you have lost, everything you have uh, be given away just like that, receive them again in Jesus' name. I pray that the multiplication of the blessings you lost in the past from this very day, the Lord will bring back to your life in Jesus' name. I pray that all the unfaithfulness of the past, forgiveness, complete forgiveness, total forgiveness, all around forgiveness, the Lord will give to everyone in Jesus' name. The courage, the faith, to be partakers of the divine nature. That divine nature, let it be part of your life from now on in Jesus' name. <laughs> Protection from heaven. Provision from heaven. Preservation of every good thing you have from heaven. the Lord make to abide in your life in Jesus name when we finish and you are going back home the blessings of God go with you the angels of God go with you the abundance of heaven go with you multiplicity of miracles and blessings go with you in Jesus name
the one who has never known joy, who has never known laughter, I pray that joy and laughter will now fill your life. The faithfulness of God to a thousand generations, the faithfulness of God that reaches to the sky, to the clouds, be with you and be yours forever in Jesus' name. No more disappointments. No more discouragement. No more disaster in your life. No more heartache. No more broken heart. From this day, a brighter future. Until you enter the heavenly Canaan. Enemies are driven away from following after you. Goodness and mercy will follow you. All the days of your life. You'll enter heaven with joy on the final day. Lord, we thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray.